Yo, it's the Rap Radar Podcast. My name is B-Dot. Elliot Wilson. Elliot, we're here in Candyland. Woo! Is it, is it the PPA Awards? This ain't, <laughs> <laughs> yes. this ain't no board game. That's for damn sure. Yes, yes, yes. Nah, Our we guys here. back finally. Two chains. Two chains. Yes, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate y'all. It's been a minute, man, since we chopped it up on this platform, man. Good, good to see you, brother. Good to see you, too. Both of y'all. Chains, man. You're a serial entrepreneur. Mm. Where are we at? Candyland. You, Candyland, yeah. I heard you bought this for your birthday, right? Yeah, well, yeah. The reason I said that because, um, yeah, the money that I would have used to 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 buy a watch or a car, I used it to help me get this piece of you know property, which mm. is which is, and it was around my birthday, so that's why I, it went out like that. But it was it was the truth. One of my friends um, called me from prison, and he was like, you know, damn Tony, you know, he's watching my page. Like, what you get? What, what you get yourself for your birthday, man? He know I, I'm a. He know I'm gonna buy something, <laughs> right? And uh, I'm like, man, I ain't see you posting nothing on your page. And you buy nothing. I said, man, I can't. I was just, man, I can't tell you, man. I'm, I'm about to get something. Like, tell me. I'm just, and I'm just one of those people who don't like to talk about things until you know it's 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 it's, it's, it's closed. Everything, the yeah. ink is dry. So you know the process. You know it just takes time to do you know basically anything these days and yep. it took a while and in my mind it was supposed to be um open around my birthday and i was going you know and it just didn't happen that way and that's how uh, god didn't see it fit but it ended up happening and we're here now and um i'm one of the i'm not gonna say black i'm i'm using myself as like a artist or entrepreneur i mean an artist or uh uh rapper but i don't like to call myself a rapper anymore but someone in that space that owns something like this mm, actually the, truly own it right mm -hmm, That's the thing. they have some ownership and something like this because they don't sell strip clubs anymore you have to have mm. this this ain't about who got the most money and all mm. of that stuff yeah even though i'm doing well in that department i don't want to act like <clears throat> somebody in atlanta's not doing you know this is a city where people are, are, are flourishing mm -hmm. and if, and if and if it was possible, it would be strip clubs on every corner, like liquor stores, because we have it like that. It's yeah. just a situation where you have to, it was, this is all relationship driven. This is just like what I'm teaching my kids right now. Like money is cool, but you know, time and annoying people being in the right place, you know, you get a, at least you get an opportunity. And that's what I was given an opportunity mm. and I capitalized on it. Yeah, because the whole yeah. strip club thing is so much a part of Atlanta culture, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, you feel like that, all of us grew up in it. You know? Yes, mm -hmm. but to you have to claim ownership in it, the challenges of that was that always something in your mind that you wanted to try to achieve. Yeah, so that's that's that's, that's another part. You have it in your mind, but it's not possible here. Mm -hmm. I mean, like legally, not possible mm -hmm. to open up a strip club. It has to be something that's existing. Someone has to has a have a permit, mm -hmm. and you have to negotiate that with the person that has, holds a, a piece of paper that's no longer, I mean, you can't get it anymore. They don't print this $20 bill or this whatever mm. piece of paper anymore, you know what I mean? And so that's where I talk about relationships, being in the right mm -hmm. place at the right time to yeah. be able to try to negotiate something with someone that has something so valuable. So you have to be grandfathered in? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, you have to do yeah. that. So, um, and it's still things getting cha changed over because because of that process. But it seems like once you finally got it going, though, it's, it's just been nothing but great energy out the gate. I saw Janelle Monet was doing things yeah, like man. everything's just been on on the on the right level of like, oh, this feels right. Yeah, for me, it's about support. You know what I mean? And a lot of people support me and my endeavors and what I do. And obviously, I reciprocate the support, but I, I'm able to gauge it. And it's not about who comes in here and throws the, the most money I'm, I'm we got good food we got good good vibes you know what i'm saying you can come in here and you know make your playlist and listen to what you want to you know listen to so um it's not about you know coming in here and having to get ones to impress me or impress the ladies just coming in the parking lot makes me a very happy man you know mm -hmm. yeah do you pick the dancers yourself I, I've been here for some auditions. Yeah. <laughs> I, had to, I, I had to see it all the way through, man. I, I have to see it all the way through. I'm, I'm, you know, this business is is different than some of my other businesses, but they still have like a common thread in them, yeah. you know. So, but, you know, like that picking, you know, dances and all of that, how that works, and um, and then telling them how to go get the proper permit to work. You have to have, to have a permit to work in here. In order to have a permit, wow. 
you can't be like a felon. You know, you wow. you you can't be like mm. one of them like thugging chicks trying to like <laughs> get it right. Well, you know, what up, the bitch? Yeah, whatever. What, what, <laughs> what up? What up? What up and it, you know, I I I actually got a um. And I'm not talking down to anybody because I, I became a felon very, very, very young. And it just sometimes stuff just happens. Right. But in this system, I wouldn't have never I wouldn't have never know that like they check you know, that. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have never know. Wow. I thought you could just so you know, it's like they got like this moral standards for for wow. for some people. You know, wow. you would mm. think like this would be, you know, you look at like this gotta be the out this it's the wild, wild west. It's gotta be some outlaw right. but stuff. There's some regulations. No, to there's it. some regular you have to have wow. fingerprints, two forms of ID, you have mm. to they do Legal age, checking. the whole thing, All right? of that, yeah. yeah. That's important. Wow. Mm -hmm. And having this place is kind of ironic because you made Birthday Song, one of the best strip club anthems of all time. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy because Birthday Song should be one of the best birthday songs of all time. It, it just, <laughs> it's, it's blurry. It's a little blurry. And with the music that I made, obviously, it has some strip club tone and energy in it because I have been attending um, strip clubs when I was 15, 16 years wow. old. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I remember a strip club used to, uh, on Cleveland Avenue, used to give away like free popcorn. And that was like our <laughs> thing. You know what I'm saying? Like we go up and they be smelling so good. We wow. might need to bring that here, honestly, man. It, man. That movie theater feel. Yeah, yeah I mean, you come in that room film. and then they got the machine in the back and you go up there and we, we sit back and, you know, so I've been coming here a long time and it was like, you know, I wouldn't mind. You know, owning something like this and the opportunity came, man. It was yeah. a, it's a real blessing. You also have a great opportunity to make records with this guy, Lil Wayne. I feel oh like every God. Collie Grove album is its own journey to get mm -hmm. to the finish line. That's a fact. So talk to me about <laughs> this, <laughs> about this current That's one and, the, and the journey it is to do that. And how, why is that so important, you think, when you look at it to your legacy and your musical legacy? The, the, the one that's out now, I am... Um, and I'm going to put me, you know, more music out. But if I didn't do another thing, I would be just so content with my journey. Mm. That's how proud and how how much hard work, sweat, blood, and tears, and just time and, and effort went into not only putting it together, but seeing it to the finish line. Yeah. You know, patience, it, patience. It, oh my God, all of that. Yeah. So. Um, someone that that is is not afraid to learn new things, actually want to learn new things. Someone is not afraid to learn new people, and so on and so forth. This was a journey of all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, it's a rap album. It's Ooh, with bars. It's yes, it's a rap app. It wasn't created this year. Like this has been, this has been cooking for a long time. A lot of. And I'm into microwavable things as well, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I can honestly tell you this is old fashioned, set the the oven on three fifty. Mm. In that turkey. Yeah. Twelve hours, fourteen yeah, hours, sixteen hours. Whatever that process is. That's yeah. what this process was for mm. the for this. And so, you know, you know, being around him is always um a different energy from me because I'm always like the the captain wherever I am or whatever you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. being around someone like him who I have modeled a lot of uh, my success after and who has I ultimately kind of like recognized as someone as that kind of gave me that mm -hmm. catapult I needed you know what I'm saying because honestly without the duffel bag boy Ooh. I think whole little energy around that time he's just hot mm -hmm. yeah and he don't even have to mess with these two guys like who are these two guys and then like a circle yeah. they actually rapping and it just and so I never looked back after that I was somebody that mm. really took the ball and just kept yep. running people you give me duffel bag I, boys I'm going yeah and I mean and I look back and it may not be anyone behind me I'm just still running mm -hmm. even from that time so the beta you know the first one I thought was something that I thought was like it was um uh, during a period he couldn't really put out uh, his yeah. own body at work. So I'm like- The first colleague grow. Yeah, the first one. I'm like, you know, this is my brother. You know, what can I do? And I'm, you know, I think I'm being smart. I can just really like use, you know, cause we, I would never like pay him per se. You mm -hmm. know what I'm like? Cause we, we do, but like, I got a budget mm -hmm. with these people who I would, I would, I would, I would, mm -hmm. I would pay if I wanted to be this artist or something, I would pay them. So. Mm -hmm. 
Shit, let me pay my home, boy. Got, man, let me look out why he, whatever. I don't know what he doing. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that was the mindset around the first one. And it's still something that I, I, I love very much. The second one was like, we on every song. We know what this mission is right yeah. now. Let's, let's. Um, yeah, really a group, you mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we on some, we, you know, we doing, this is the first interview I've done without him since mm -hmm. putting out the project because I didn't even want to, like, we either do it together, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We appreciate know? that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so this is the first one I did without him. But, um, like, cause I'm, I'm very, very happy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm Grammy happy. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm like that happy, you know what I'm saying? When I talk about that, and I don't know the process or whatever, but I just feel that way about this project, mm. you know, from top to bottom, from the narrations that I put together with 50 to the musical bed that's behind the narrations that I put together mm. with them joints, you know what mm. I'm saying? And everything, um, and just so much thought that, that went, it, this was just not an accident. You mentioned the 50 Cent, like the first voice we hear is him mm -hmm. on the album. Like, mm -hmm. how did you convince him to do the narration for the project? Well, I have a rapport with 50, you know what I'm saying? I have a rapport with a lot of people. I'm just not like, I don't know what it is. I'm just, <laughs> just, just you know, you're cool. A real, you're a real one. Yeah, Change I just be cool. And so yeah. I had this idea because, um, you know, it's, uh, how, how do I explain this? A lot of the, uh, projects that were coming out i felt like were getting back to like, like some type of interaction it was just like you know what i mean uh, at least that's what i wanted to bring back into the game and instead of doing like a normal maybe like a dj hosting type of thing because i saw uh felicia the goat do it with with with, with drum i've already done my own thing right. but yeah. even Tally, even yeah you know, with even doing that i would have felt like i'd have been even though i've done one i right. felt like i'd have been being a follower so to speak you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? and so with uh welcome to collie grove um it's like this fictional place i put college part whatever together so now i'm trying to and now i'm listening to some of the songs and i'm like they have these like to me have a visual aspect mm -hmm. to it or whatever so i actually wrote these uh, things for 50 to say, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm. And, and I sent it to him and I explained to him, because first of all, 50 is somebody that has a voice I think people can recognize. And mm -hmm. two, he's in the TV space. Mm -hmm. And three, I knew that when it was time to put out an album, I was gonna do something to like, maybe fuck people up to think maybe he was putting out, I, I had this whole thing in my head about trailers and just, you know, you know, chaos and mayhem and just yeah. like, what the hell are they got going on? And so <laughs> I reached out to him, but I was already having a, um, mutual conversation with him about bml yeah okay because i'm in the first i'm in the next whatever bml stacks. yeah stacks that's yeah. right yeah so that's my <laughs> character name stacks that nigga fire <laughs> that, that nigga cold i'm yeah. telling you now i don't even want to see i don't like to talk about stuff until you see what i'm saying right. so i'm gonna let me leave, 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 leave that alone okay but look out for that yeah it's so be special yeah so i'm i'm doing um bml i'm <laughs> stacks i'm about to do this bml thing and so I hit him and he and he did it for me. I mean, it didn't take long, and he killed it on the first take. As far as like Ooh. knowing how to breathe, the spaces, mm -hmm. just little stuff that us as creators just you know that I just wanted. So that part was done, and then it became time for me to like. Normally, I would let someone else arrange my album. I'm somebody that's like it's done, figure it out yeah. or whatever. But with this one, I felt the need to just do everything because if it was going to be a movie, then it didn't. It, I couldn't worry about tempos and what came next and all of that stuff because if you're watching a movie, they have these different scenes and different energies. And so when I started putting the scenes together, um, it just, man, it just made it a beautiful piece of art and I'm just excited about it. And and and, and I'm looking forward to using this old footage next year or whenever we go to the Grammys and, and pick, pick, up, pick up that thing. I love how you're calling it early, James. Mm, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. Or Mm -hmm. What do you think of it when Wayne says that you and him are the new big timers? Do you feel like any pressure living up to that title? No, nah, I think that was just a bar. Okay. Yeah, I think that was just a bar. The big timers were uh, Baby and Manny Fresh. Yes. And we could never replace those guys. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Uh, Baby is a huge, you know, whatever you want to call it, yeah. mogul. Manny Fresh is one of our greatest producers of, you know, whatever. Yeah. And he actually had did that beat so i think that's what that was and that song was a big timer sound right yeah. yeah but you also compare yourselves to ray and ghost because you're a big ray kwan i fan. am i am i saw ray <laughs> Shame kwan on at, uh, yeah, yeah i do i saw ray kwan at uh Khaled's birthday recently i was like man that's my dog right there man i met i met ray kwan in atlanta hmm. he uh 
it was going in like a racetrack gas station. I was with my wife. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> said, man, that's Ray Kwan. She was like, I'm like, that's Ray Kwan. He got like a certain bop. Just so randomly you see him at the gas station. I randomly see him. I randomly see him. So I'm like, man, shit, I'm about to go. I walk in the store. Yo, Ray, he don't really know me at the time. Mm. You know what I mean? He, 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 like I would be if somebody walked up in the gate. I totally get how he <laughs> his energy. Right. So he like, what's good? I'm like, yeah, I'm titty boy, whatever, whatever. I kick to him. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan, man. You know, Atlanta. You know, I'm like cool, cool. I'm like, you know, then I hit him with my second. You know, my real job. You need some weed. <laughs> you know, I'm your man. You right. Know, whatever. Hello. You know what I'm saying? And uh, man, we built a beautiful relationship. Man, we on old national, like the street I'm from. Whatever, like sitting at this little place it was called the frozen i mean he pulled up in a range robe i never forget it man and he was walking <laughs> up the hill and, I, and niggas was like man this nigga look like right man i swear this nigga look the whole time it was him and man it was just he was just welcome with open arms he ended up i mean my mixtape days mm -hmm. he did verses and he actually told me that i was gonna be he he predicted i mean i kind of you know, felt it but he i remember him saying you're gonna be you you one of them ones mm. I always remember, I feel like it was a magic sign. It was like 09, 2010. We had just got Rap Radar going. Spend It was taking off. Mm -hmm. I remember Tex sent us the email like, he's no longer Titty Boy. He's 2 chains. Oh, he sent out the email? He said, See, he, he said stuff something. I don't be knowing. <laughs> <laughs> stuff I don't even be knowing. Because he was posting yeah. you as like, you know, Trapper Valley, yeah. Titty Boy. Yeah. But it was like, now you're 2 chains. Spend It was taking off. And even the Breakfast Club, we did the show at SOB's. Breakfast Club hosted the show. I remember that. We were like a sponsor you of the show. You came to my room. I came to you and interviewed you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like mm -hmm. everything was coming together. Like two mm -hmm. chains is like the artist, Breakfast Club, Rap Radar is a website. Like, like just talk about that. Like, like I always tell artists, like, it's really that one song, as much work you put in, that one song eventually changes everything, right? I think everybody's one song away. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. The biggest artist, the the, the yeah. one that just, it's just, it really take one song. I mean, you know, a lot of other things have to happen, but it's really one song. Yeah. I mean, here's it. It's, it's spend it for you, but that might not even get played in your set list now. But yeah. what that record was at that time yeah. was needed for you to be who you are today. Yeah, and it was something other people could relate to, like the song and it's mine, whatever it was, that energy. Mm -hmm. And it was the fact for me that this was actually my seventh mixtape. I'm just like, damn, damn seventh. Seven. Trying, yes. I was on my seventh mixtape when I put People this out. You don't realize that. Yeah. Yes, and with that also came some shows, some 3,500, some five, some 7,500 shows, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To the point where I did run up, you know, 60, 70 bands. Yeah, I run up a couple bands, yeah, right? Yeah. That That's yeah. not with the, so I got bag bands because before before um duffel bag i'm i'm the song duffel bag i'm serving t tune too i'm serving rapper I'm, that's what yeah. i was known because uh, yeah you know luda's work he used to work on the radio and everybody knew him and and he knew me mm -hmm. and so that's how i really was in with a lot of rap snoop and a lot of these yep. other guys mm -hmm. or whoever Come it was Atlanta, before was i even was said i was a rapper i would just do this and so um so when 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 um that that's why I was so happy with, when Wayne did the hook the duffel bag boys I didn't tell him shit he just said go get the duffel bag I was like I'm like nigga how this nigga know we the duffel bag it was just so much like <laughs> I'm like this nigga be paying attention you know because right. you know it was just it was just crazy how that happened and so you know fast fast forward in that space I'm I'm having some money I you know I'm I'm hustling I got a studio but I'm not recording all the time and then I go on tour with Wayne to see just how much he you know raps and i understand that this is so this is a job i'm supposed to do this every day i'm mm, really mm. i'm i'm really tripping i'm trying to like make a play and rap later on and then so once i go cold turkey no hustling that stop this other thing start happening you mm. know what i'm saying and i see it happen i'm feeling it happen i'm all the artists dming me or whatever mm -hmm. it is at the time mm -hmm. and um and and that focus that I got from that, that focus, I think, I mean, it just turned me up. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't about, you know, you know, weed or nothing no more. So when the song Spin It comes out, we serving it to radio and, and all of that. And I never forget this. I never forget this. Tech comes to me the same one that emails you and says, man, we're going to need about $40,000 or 
or we're gonna lose this record. You mm. know what I'm saying? We independent, we're not with a label. He's like, we're gonna have to get some people. And he's trying to explain to me like to to basically work for us, help us, and man, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And and they gonna, man, we're gonna be up good up in Detroit and DC, man. We need, I'm telling you, we're gonna lose this record. So I right. said, all right, cool, cool, cool. I hang up the phone, right? And then I don't answer for like two days, cause I'm like, <laughs> I ain't got but like a six, this is my rap, man. I done ran up, I got about a 60, 70, he want 40 of it. Mm. And uh, man, 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 to this day, I, I, I'm happy I did it, but I did not want to do it. I'm gonna be mm. honest, you know? Because uh, I could see my, I had a calendar, I could kind of see how much money I was going to get, whether it be, it was, you know, we call it the Chitlin market, where yeah. it's, yeah. you know, around here, you can, you can be rich in Mississippi and Memphis Those and, markets, yeah. and the Carolinas. And so I did that. And you had uh, to make that sacrifice. I had to make that so sacrifice. That I had to shoot my own video with my own, you know, money. And, and it's just, it just like, it was a lot of things that, that, that I want artists to know, like that, I, I know that is what makes other people believe in you when you're not afraid to like go in your own pocket and be like, yep. you know, shit, I'm, I'm gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? How much the video? Like, damn, that's how much, <laughs> damn, you know? Like, mm -hmm. and uh, I did that. Can't, can't nobody take that from me. Yeah. And it worked for me, you know? Yeah. And uh, I do know other people that will wait, kind of wait for somebody to, you know, do something for them, you know, whether, whether, whether it's, you know, book a flight or do anything like that. But I'm just somebody that's kind of proactive and I, I go get it myself. Right. You still got that hunger though, man. I saw that you tweeted, I still rap every night just in case you thought I was comfortable. You mm -hmm. know, at this point in your career, like what's fueling that hunger? Me not knowing what I'm gonna say next is still super exciting to me. Hmm. Me not knowing like, me, um, I said some shit the other day. Ooh. <laughs> I, I'm in the studio, I'm already working on this next project, right? So I say some shit the other day, right? Boom, and it's looping because I'm trying to get the rest of my shit together. Not the blue motherfucker said. Man, I just heard this bit, this song been looping fucking 20, 30 minutes. Nigga just heard what I said and it just geeked me up that, mm. you know what I'm saying? I said something about a, a, a meet and greet. A fan asked me to sign a P, but I was going, I was in this lane and niggas didn't, didn't hear it until like 30 minutes later. So I think me just knowing that I'm not burnt out yet, mm. you know what I'm saying? I think I'm still creative. I'm, I, that's what I want to say. I still have good ideas mm. and people pay money for ideas. People steal ideas. Mm. God still giving me ideas. That's mm. what I want to say. That's why I want to make my point. Did mm. I really want to say that? Like, I think ideas is the one of the biggest forms of currency. Mm. I get them. I have a lot of ideas still to this day. Mm. So that's what my drive is. You think that's a blessing? It just- It, it just, gotta be. Yeah. People buy them. People pay, Fuck me, billions. <laughs> you got a really good idea? Right. Motherfucker, buy that bitch for an idea. Think about it. I got some. Right. I done told you about this shit. I done, this 50 shit a year old, I done put together. Boom, these ideas, even the shit that the trail ain't even yeah. the listening party in a movie theater. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Even what this listening party in the theater means for the next chapter of my life is all just like these ideas mm -hmm. I got. That's what always bugs me out about artists. Like y'all can make something and then you have to sit on it and wait a year maybe for it, two years for it to come out. But the crazy thing about this Conigo project, even though it took so long, it doesn't feel like y'all just was sitting on this. It feels like it could have been made last month. Yeah, no, True. Lot, so, you know? so first of all, good music is timeless. We know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you're not talking about, uh, you know. Whatever fat, topics. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, when you're the trend. Not, yeah. You, you you know you do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm just going right. You know what I'm saying? You know exactly what it is. So when it's not trendy raps or trendy flows or trendy beats, um, shit, we got a song pressure out with a damn. I didn't even know the producer was whistling until we did. I'm like, we're gonna go to Jimmy Jimmy Kimmel and do this show. I want you to make the beat. Well, that was Fallon the first. Oh, one. me and Jimmy no, Fallon. The I'm first sorry. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Fallon and do yeah. the show, and I want you to make the beat on TV. Because it's like, I'm just saying what we could do to be creative and keep, you know, and then for me, a lot of times, because I've done TV so much, I feel like most of the times it should be melodic hooks because the crowd mm. there drives the, what you're seeing on TV, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So if it's like somebody singing at the end, ooh, then the, you can hear the TV go. They get connected. They mm -hmm. get everything, yeah. you know what I mean? yeah, I've done yeah. this. A, when yeah. you go up there trying to rap and shit like that, the crowd, like, you might hear one. You know, and it could be a hit record, right? Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, man, I don't know. You can't. You sure we're gonna do this? I'm like, man, maybe we should do 
you know, the Usher record transplant. No, we got to <laughs> wait. You know what I'm saying? That's our big one. We're going. So I'm like, what can we do? I'm like, let's just be creative, man. You know, Bangladesh is crazy creative. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He, he going to wear a crazy hat or some <laughs> shit. Yeah. And I'm like, let's, let's have him. Make the beat, you know yeah. what I'm saying? This is no bullshit, B. Right on TV. Man, right we on we like practiced TV. this shit eight times. This nigga whistled the same way eight times. I was, I was like, yeah. And uh, I know Tune was like, man, Manny Fresh used to make beats, you know, beat, you know, verbally too, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So in their head. Yeah. yeah, so just stuff like that, just taking those creative risks. And then honestly, having somebody like Wayne with me. Yeah makes it easier for me to take these creative risks because I'm with a whole alien over here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah. man, bro, I'm thinking about just like, and he like, cool, you know what I'm saying? So, But I'm, as tight as you guys are, do you have creative differences? What does that look like? Is it arguing in the <laughs> studio? Yeah, it's fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's fun, man. That boy, that's, that's a challenge because you probably motivate the alien like nobody else can. So Motiv with that comes the other side of it, right? Either motivate or aggravate one of the other. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that, that's where the other side comes from, right? Like, yeah, but like you can light that fire in them more than anybody in some sense. Yeah, I mean, and not just in the studio, every video set, wherever it is, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just <laughs> no, because he he is who he is already. He don't have to really like prove nothing, and really not me either, and. But I honestly, like I was saying earlier, I still I, I'm still in a, a space where I can still learn things, not like learn how to do mm. a record, but just still, you know, maybe I'm not carrying myself to the highest level that I should in certain instances. You know what I'm saying? And there's not so much of him saying that it just made me like thinking, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes mm. I will. I don't know. I'm just somebody that's. I like to try to be as normal as possible still. You know what I'm Like mm -hmm. I told you, I got to, mm -hmm. what I got to do after this and shit. I got like daddy shit to do after this. You know what I'm saying? Doing my interview in the strip club and I'm a, you know, I got to go do some daddy <laughs> shit. Duality. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, you know what I mean? So I'm somebody trying to, trying to do all that. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, it is that energy where we, we do want the best for for each other. Being yeah. that this is like your second time in the group, like is there similarities or differences working with Wayne versus Dollar from Player Circle? Now, that's a good question, B. Thank you. It's a real good question. Well, I can tell you this, me and Dollar grew up together. You know okay. what I'm saying? And at this point, I've known Wayne for 20 years, so we've kind of grown up. Yeah. I guess the second part of my life, I didn't think about it like that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. Yeah. You love a rap but, partner. But, 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 but him and Dollar were both, you know, on side of me when I got married. You know what mm. I'm saying? So Man. Wow. Hello. they both was there. Best men. Yeah. They Best both was men. there. Yeah. They both was there. Solid so, men. So the... The process with me and Dollar is that, I mean, it's some similarity. Dollar was rapping before me. Mm. Um, uh, you know, I learned stuff from him as well. Mm. You know, uh, I don't know, man. It just, I don't know. Um, you know, Wayne was his little Wayne, obviously. You know, I don't <laughs> right. know how to how yeah. to put it, but just like when I'm thinking about like the process of it, not yeah. like the projects, but the process of doing the songs is 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 kind of like similar. Like we're not giving each other like a lot of direction. Yeah. I think I think out of respect and confidence, knowing that they got this, yeah. like you know, I think that's what it is on both on both right. of those projects. It's like. I know Dollar gonna go crazy. I know Wayne gonna go yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. But how rewarded was it? Because the first Kali Grove, there was some label politics. You couldn't have him on every song. Mm -hmm. You're so now, good. <laughs> now this album is like you good. get to be a real rap group. Like there's mm -hmm. no solo song. Every song you're no, both yeah. connected to. That me. was very important. That was that was that was one of the most important things for me. That mm -hmm. we'd be on every song together. Yeah. We could have did the one solo song a piece or whatever, but I didn't I didn't even see that being fit. I thought we all needed to mesh up do songs, mix it up. You know, like I said, production was key. You know, we got Everything. two Havoc beats Ooh, on there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, it's just, you, how you got a Manny Fresh and a Havoc and a Bangladesh? <laughs> it's just, well, what do y'all got going on over here? Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, we can do that. Like, we're able to do, we're in a space where we can do this. We can take mm -hmm. these creative risks and reap the rewards when it's time to. And so with with that being said, it was, it was, it was more, uh, fun to do it when yeah. we're on each project together and um even the visuals just being in the 
same yeah. place together doing them and mm-hmm. not knowing what the hell we're going to come out the trailer looking like. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. It's fun still. But I'm going to mm-hmm. go back to be that original question because I don't think you answered it. I skipped your question. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> When you and Wayne do have a minor difference, like uh, how does it how does it get resolved? Like give us an example of when you might not have seen everything the same way, but you got on the same page and that's what we now hear. Yeah. Is, we, is there an example from the new album where you felt like it was it had to get to that place? No, no. With with Wayne, like so the process with this album was a, a couple songs weren't clearable or mm. had to be reconstructed to be clear. Mm. Now he works just as hard and if not as hard as me so he doesn't mind that he'll be like you know fuck it we could just you know we got other songs or whatever yeah my thing may be you know i think we need this one right here. <laughs> you know work. i think yeah. we need to figure yeah. you know yeah. and i'll just figure it out but it's not it's nothing that that we can't ever fix or nothing where it you know we have to come to blows or anything crazy like that it's just some creative stuff where one person is maybe you know more nonchalant and the other person is like i'm telling you yeah you know what I'm saying? We get this one right. This motherfucker gonna go. So but do you think I mean. he? Do you think he appreciates that you have such a kind of solid vision of what you think Kali Grove should be? Do you? Is he comfortable how you kind of assume more of a leadership role of like what that aesthetic, what Kali Grove means? He's still a part. He's still very much a part of part of yeah. everything. Yeah, he's still very much a part of everything. You know, we text. Yeah, we text it down there. Everything yeah, we, we yeah, mutually we talk, agreed upon. Yeah, we talk a lot. So. Yeah. Let's just dope. run them like run this run this by. But I got I got run this by boom and vice versa. And then you know he he had ideas too, which was which was very cool. Mm. Yeah, yeah, ideas too, which was very very cool. Which is what I wanted. That's what I told him. Like, boy, I need I like I like I want you to be a part. Like, I don't want to do all this stuff by myself. I know what yeah. you do. So that was important. Too. What was the example? Of one of his um, creative ideas. The um, the idea behind um, Oprah and Gail was his mm. idea with um, Benny the Butcher. Yeah, with Ben the Butcher, the way we shot it with uh, his particular cameraman. It was three different. Our, each, our own personal cameraman shot this, like, I don't know, like cinematic, mm. like, you know, black and white footage and glued it all together. Mm. And the shit crazy. Yeah. You know what mm. I'm saying? It's one, it's one of the. But, you know, you pay all this money for. I don't wanna, <laughs> I'm not talking about. I mean, all the videos look nice. Let me just put yeah, it yes, like that. All the videos look nice, but it was it was something that I ain't see because, like, you know, I'm explaining. Like, you know, we got this. You know, we got an Usher record. And we got like a Pressure record. But you know, like, we got we really rappers. We got to let these folks know we rap. Like, we can't. Like, you know, and so. I guess he like thought about what I said or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that was the one. And it and it's been getting some great feedback. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's been getting some great feedback on us. So do you know if Gail or Oprah heard the record yet? Well, you know, um, Oprah hit me last night. B. <laughs> That's funny you asked. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck you want to hear? Nah, I'm just like, <laughs> Oprah, uh, Gail, DM me this morning. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, 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 man, I ain't, I ain't heard nothing from them. Or yeah. what made you do that? You get a car. You get a car. Though. You get a rollie. You get a rollie. <laughs> I bought twenty rollies last year for Christmas <laughs> from my team. Really? There you 20, go. Twenty-one rollies. Damn. You always take care of your team. Mm-hmm. And um, and I always you see that's the thing. It. People be, you know, like you laughing. People would be dead serious though. Mm. Yeah, I can get people coming here. And lady, all of them got forty ones. The women too. I ain't getting no little bitty. No thirty six millimeters. Nah, everybody, the Ooh. women, the women got forty ones. Everybody that's a part of like, I don't know. Me, I just, I just love everybody. I appreciate people, and mm-hmm. I, I like actually pray that I can help people by getting them rollies. I ain't really helping them, but they help me get to a certain point. And I, I reciprocated, so that's where the rolly idea came from. I really bought. 21 brand new not no motherfucking recent i really went there and you know and they was playing jane they wasn't mm. all bust down you know what i mean but it <laughs> was go. yeah yeah uh, yeah since we talk about some of these songs one of my favorites is ppa how did that song mm-hmm. develop yeah at, at the candy land <laughs> <laughs> no, i didn't have i didn't have uh candy land yet uh, ppa uh, is short for pretty pussy award i just be Thinking of some crazy shit sometimes. Some ideas, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and I do have, I do have, a vision on doing a real award. <laughs> for it. What does the Pretty Pussy Award look like, Chase? <laughs> oh well, let me tell you how I was gonna do it. Please. Yeah, I'm gonna have a whole award. I'm gonna have my dog. I can have uh, Justin LeBoy host it. Somebody that's okay. very toxic. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Right. <laughs> you gotta have a toxic host. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. 
can't do it in L.A. really because they can't get naked. Right. Can't do it in New York really because they can't get naked. Right. Can do it in Atlanta, but don't need to do it in Atlanta. Mm. And we'll talk about that off the thing. Okay. Uh So I'm thinking about maybe like Houston. Okay. Houston. I thought thought it was going Miami. I was. I didn't know where it's going with it. Or Miami. There we Mm -hmm. go. Okay. But Houston in the middle. Everybody come all the way up. But Miami a good idea. Right. And then we do a real. People come dress whatever whatever Mm -hmm. and. It's different. You know, stuff. <laughs> you don't do me like this. <laughs> you know, they got you do like don't this. do me like this, but a real award thing where yeah. it's kind of like, you know, they have porn awards and all yeah, that. Yeah, AVNs. So, yeah, so it wouldn't be porn because there's no sex at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah. It's a classy It would be just about something that I was in my head, something that's classy and sexy that that celebrates the female mm. appreciate beauty on all levels yeah they celebrate all right, levels man. so that's what the pp yeah the pretty pussy awards would be you know what i'm saying and you know at the end we'll you know grammys they do a vote right yep you know we have to figure out this out you know is, is there a prize you know like yeah. so okay <laughs> Right. Get a rolly too? Bro, you get a <laughs> get a rolly. You get a rolly. You might have to get a rolly. They, they, man, listen, man, you might have to go G-Wagon for that one. Hey. So yeah. in terms of the song though, who, who hits slow so who hits fab? Like, yo, you gotta get all this. So thing. I see Fab. Okay. No, so that's 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 a good story. So I see Fab in New York, man. I don't know what the hell we were doing, but me and Fab was hanging out in New York and um he came to the studio with me. Mm. And um uh, I was playing these joints and Fab is like one of them ones too. See, that's what I want to let y'all know too. Uh, uh, some of us has been doing this thing over a decade. Hello. They're still like, you know, hungry. relevant, hungry, getting booked, still mm-hmm. knowing how to put their clothes together, still knowing <laughs> how to like, act. Yeah, yeah, all of that stuff. Mom, Fab just had a birthday the other day. Still look taking care of himself, whatever yeah. the thing. So. I have a high respect for that because a lot of people don't even know that there's like probably four or five people that's at that level now that's mm-hmm. been doing yes, it. It's not that many. That's yes, very low percentage Small group. to be in your, if you're in your forties and motherfucking like, yep. I like to hear Ross say, ah, oh, my back, ah, oh, you know, like when you be doing that shit, like if you ain't doing all that, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. But relevant today, not, yeah, not relevant, nostalgia. Man. Yeah, 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 man, I'm booked this weekend, next week, took this bitch over the rest of this year, you know what right. I'm saying? And I'm a, you know, and so anyway, I respect Fab and so. Similar well, I, space. Mm-hmm. And so I uh, went to the studio and that beat, um, man, that beat just gave me one of them, I don't know, like a, you know, we say yo kid down here, but like a New York type of vibe. Yeah, it has that, yeah. it has that sampling. And my boy Mark Mark Bird did that beat. And so um I was like, man, I played it for him. And then you know, it's one of them ones where he totally got it. Like he like, boom, and he went in on it. So appreciate Fab for that. That was one of the features that just because it was I believe it or not, it was it was kind of hard to get features on this project. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was people really, I guess, busy and stuff. So, yeah. But when you talk about features, you're like the feature king. And this yeah. year, like on the low, you've been kind of killing it. Like Ooh. from Larry June, Ocean. That Larry June is a hard verse. Ocean Cuisine, verse. that's really good. Man, that's a hard ass verse. It is. <laughs> I got, we get some other verses. You got yeah, Off the Lot with Currency, Spaceship Views of the Killer Mike album, Mask Up. Neek Bucks. B that's getting his list ready. I'm just saying. No, no those bars on there though. There he is. And you know B dot ain't capping. Back in like twenty twelve, you went crazy with like a hundred features. So it's like this year, like what's your approach when you go to do features? Are you just trying to I still do them the same night I get them. Okay. And send them back. I still do them. You said same night every time. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, I do that. I still do that. I got some more stuff gonna come out in a minute on this for people. But yeah, I still do that. Um but it's I'm of course I'm not getting axed as much as I was in 2012. Yeah. But if somebody asks me to do something, I'll I'll do it and send it back because I'm already in the studio every night. You know what I'm saying? I call it homework. So I'll ask my engine, "We got any homework to do tonight?" He'll be like, "No, you just do us." I'll, no, I'll do that. Mm. So yeah. do you think it has to connect to you right away for you to feel like it's the right song for you to be on? No, when I'm doing a feature for someone, um, when I'm doing a feature for someone, obviously I'm, I listen to the song. Yeah, now if it's something that I'm just not in that space, then I'm not gonna do it. And I have mm. some, I have some people have sent me a couple of things, but it's just like I'm not even, I'm not there anymore, or mm-hmm. whatever it is, it might be. 
if it's heavy on the, maybe the booty shaking or heavy on some other stuff, like, come on, man, I can't be you know, <laughs> yeah. some of this stuff. But for the most part, people been giving me some really dope, dope records and stuff like this. And like, you know, the Larry record, Cardo actually sent me that record. I ran into Cardo at a hotel. I don't even know where the hell I was at, but I ran into him and he was telling me that he was finishing up the Larry Project and I'm a Larry fan. Yeah. And so that's how that happened. Last year, though, you had the record with the Osley Brothers, The Plug. Yeah. And you said God worked this out in a real cra crazy way. Can man. you explain what happened with man. that? Uh, man, another thing, man. I was uh, in L.A. and I called Lance from 1500. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Lance. 1500 to nothing. Yeah, and I was like, man, I got this idea for a record, man. And I saw you messing with this. I saw you with Ron or something like that. They like, yeah, we ain't finna pull up now. You ought to pull up too. <laughs> like, yeah, we, sh we shooting a video. Wow. And like, you shooting a video like, all right, cool. I want to meet him. I came, when I came to meet him, Ron liked me so much. He put me on the song they shooting a video for. And I had to go get some clothes to get in the video that same day that they was shooting. Wow. Yeah, so I get there. They shooting the video, man. He like, man, he, he started calling me son and everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. I'm like, man, my daddy passed away. I'm like, pops, what's, what's, what we no, doing? Man. And yeah. we build that cool report. And uh, I did a verse right there. He sat right here. And I did my verse right beside him. And then they was like, you you ready to shoot the video? <laughs> so I sent somebody to the crib to grab some, some pants or something. And we shot the video. And then after that, the original thing that I called for, I was like, well, man, I got this idea and it's a song I got. It's called Atlanta. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come out soon. It, I, I love it. But that's how it ended up happening in a, in a, in a really godly way, I like to say. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. Let's get back to some more of the music from Collie Grove too. Millions from now. Millions from now. Woo! I was just playing that pulling up. Literally, when I parked, I was playing that song. Really? Yeah, yeah man. That feels that, like a lot of your energy on, on that, that And joke. it's tr the truth. <laughs> <laughs> The thing about my stuff is, and I mean this so humbly, so, so humbly, but when people come to me and be like, you know, man, I booked you in, booked you in 2013 at the mm. such and such in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. First of all, a lot of artists don't actually meet the person that booked them. Let's get that clear. Really? And mm -hmm. No. They deal with, <laughs> you have a, you, you have a, Booking person booking on your agent side, deals yeah, with that, yeah. That deals with the promoter. Yeah, right. I show up to the club. I'm not. I'm not. You know, it'd be a couple promoters that make their way in there and do whatever. Take you a might dap them up. Might take a rare. picture money up, but, but I don't. Rare. You ain't hit me up. Gave me no money. I ain't put. So then you might walk up. I might see someone somewhere, and obviously we all look different from ten years ago. Most right. men, I most men mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and women, <laughs> and so <laughs> and so then you know you do that, and it's like man. That was millions of dollars ago. Mm. Woo, hello. Yeah. Humbly. I mm. just don't remember that. You know what wow. I'm saying? And so in a in a weird, crazy way, by the time some of us get a million dollars, we won't remember the person yeah. that we wow. had knew at ten thousand dollars. So it's money brings amnesia. It just bring a whole bunch of shit because you got to do a whole bunch of shit to get this money and you just may not. Now, of course, those those special love and close ones to you. But this is yeah. and honestly, this is just my theory, my right. take on things. I don't I'm not right about everything, but, you know, I'm not somebody that says money should change you or nothing like that. But, you know, in, in certain senses, by the time you say, for instance, for me, you know, originally from me to get a meeting, I'm gonna have to do so many, so many shows, right? Mm -hmm. So then I'm yeah. in different states, yep. different stages. I see different fans. I'm not just getting my million dollars in Vegas at a resident. Right. I'm actually moving around. You, go you know, country. and even if it was Vegas, that's a tourist city, so mm -hmm. people would be moving around. So don't expect me, and that's all I'm saying. Mm. So I might. I won't so, remember you. I won't remember you. You know, so <laughs> me and I won't remember. You know, I remember you. Cause you still around, <laughs> right. but if you came back and like, man, I was in your room, I'm like, this is yeah. weird, you know what I mean? This is weird. So that, that's what it is, man. You would say you made a million dollars bootlegging your own mixtape. That's facts too. How'd you do man, that? Man, I just be telling the truth. Hey, the truth is important, True. man. That's why you're here. <laughs> well, when I say bootlegging my own mixtape is I did the mixtape and then, you know, this is back when you had to uh, press up so many CDs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you know, this is around, this is right after I seen uh, Jeezy run, run this shit all the way up. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Hello. I'm seeing all these niggas run this shit up. So by the time I get to uh, 
like true religion and all that stuff, I just started, you know, pressing up more of my things to sell. And mm. so that's what I meant by, you know, so when I did get my deal, when I finally went back to Def Jam, it, it wasn't so much about the money and and definitely I wasn't doing a 360 because I had so much leverage and I had some some money. My my thing in every meeting that I went to was about being a, um, an international superstar. Like what y'all got going on internationally? Yeah. That was some of my questions. How many you have you have employees over there? Some would say 20, some would, would say, you know, we have this, this. And so I wanted to be known internationally because I felt like when I finally was going to get a deal, I had I already made some, I had been to South Dakota, North Dakota, I'd have been to Boise, Idaho. I'm one of them people. Mm. Well, I done touched, <laughs> I swear to God, I, I, I'm like, I done did the whole United States. Yeah, yeah. And when I look up, I done did the whole, you know? And so of course I'm, I ain't, yeah. I mean, you know, I ain't done Montana or some shit like mm -hmm. that, but, and so that's, that was my, my, uh, my, my approach to, to you know, doing what I'm doing. Why do you think you was ready for like, cause think about it, like you put all the work in, to get to that moment, spend it happens. Then I remember just that first run, everybody felt like chains can't miss, no mm -hmm. lie, mm -hmm. birthday, yeah. everything was just like this like, mm -hmm. why do you think you were so built for it that moment? And like what was that like with that momentum you was building at that time? Just wanted it so bad, man. That's that's I had to I had to really remind myself, not all the time, but sometimes I have to remind myself that I, I prayed to be here. Mm. Like Ask to like ask yeah, whatever please. God I believe in, you know, what I believe in, I pray to be. So sometimes when I don't feel like taking a picture or fucking like, mm. yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, because I'm a human being with, you know, mm -hmm. feelings and most sometimes I'm tired and all that stuff. I do actually have to think like, man, I pray to be like a, not, I pray to be like a, Good like rap. I ain't just say I just want to rap, Lord. <laughs> please just like let me be a rap. I one was like, I want to be like, yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm really letting it. Then it's like it's starting to happen. It's starting to because you know for me it's about lining up. I remember how the no light thing happened. I remember Woo. how I remember how the birthday song happened when when Ye heard. I remember I remember how all these things even happened. Well, I remember break that they, down though. Break that down. I think a lot of people don't know at this point that was you know that's with. What, with those the whole spend it takes off. Just spend it takes off, and then no uh, lie and like birthday, like that that whole yeah, momentum no you were building. No like. lie, no lie. I saw Drake at a All Star game, and I'm I'm popping. I mean, like yeah. people yelling two chains from the court <laughs> during during um, the national anthem. I'm like LeBron mm. yelling two and but I'm like in row ten at the same time. Mm. Wow, I still ain't got my shit all the way together mm. now. I see, I think I see Tune down there on the bench, which I know wherever he at, even then I'm good. And um, I see Tune, I see a couple other people, you know, I see they know me down here, you know what I mean? So yeah. just like anything else, I just man, act like I supposed to be here. So I started walking down. Mm -hmm. And man, Purpose. now that I'm thinking about this, I never forget, I remember Mary J. Blige, even though I'm really, I'm cool with her now. I remember her saying, hey, two chains. I'm like, Man, Mary know who the fuck I am. Mm. I remember just being it's a like moment. Mm -hmm. And then I ran into Drizzy, but I already knew him from when I went on tour with I am Wayne music. back I am then. Music yeah, tour, I yep. am music to mm -hmm. to see like, oh, this how you you know you get off stage and then you go back to the studio. Like that's all Wayne did. So that's what when I talked about going cold turkey with the trapping. So when I saw him, he was like, "Man, what's good?" I said, "Man, you know, I got one for you," mm. and I was lying. <laughs> 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 so it's funny that it's called No Lie. It's funny that it's called No Lie. That's hilarious. But one of my investments before I got my deal was this tour bus with a studio on it because I already done seen um, what this boy Wayne be doing on this on bus. bus yeah. Yeah, I'm already seen, when I he went on tour bus, with him, yeah. he, he let me. I'm sleeping on the studio bus, so that was one of my big. I don't went through like two of these little convert. This is before Sprinter, so I'm going mm -hmm. through these little turtle top bands, and then I saw. On tour bus, it's three, four hundred thousand. Like, you know, Mama got a house. I had got her a house, and this is before I even got my house. I said, mm. you know how you know how we think. Gotta get it right. Like, yep. no, nah, this is how we think. If shit don't go right, we go back to Mama. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it's yes. just how, how you know. And I've I've met mentors in my life that told me that's not the way that other cultures think. That's just some like some really some black shit. You it, know is. it is. It is. So I get out of this house, and then I get this tour bus. But in my mind, I'm like, the two bus got beds, kitchen, and if I got two, nigga, this the crib. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, 
the bus outside and I go to the bus and my engineer, and I go tell my engineer, I said, shit, man, I just told Drake, I got some for him. He said, send it. And he's like, what you gonna send him? I'm like, man, I don't know. So they was like, we need to pull up some beats. And me and Mike Will had been working together for years since Mike Will, before Mike Will was 21. Mm -hmm. I literally, I've said this before, I used to sneak him in the clubs with me. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He was just somebody that just, Mike Will was someone that just did not take no for an answer. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, like, and it worked for him. He did not, <laughs> there was no way he was not pulling up on you. Yeah, like, yeah. It, was not, it was no way. And so, even though Mike Will wasn't there, his um he was on my mind. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm like, mm -hmm. play these. You know, let's play Mike Will. You know, he, he might have something. Yeah, yeah. And he played the beat, and then no lie, be like had like some type of drop in it that I told myself, this sounds like a part where Drake could do mm. like some melody. You know, I feel like <laughs> I feel like Drake will do some melody shit right here. So I do a verse right then and there, boom, and I sent it to him, and he's like, you know, great, whatever. He's gonna, you know, he got me. Mm. You know, and I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm like, man, shit finna be crazy. And you know, he got me turned to like a week and maybe to like two weeks and maybe not a month, but maybe maybe three weeks, you know what I'm saying? And while I'm just like waiting like to see what he gets, I do another verse, just waiting, you know what I'm saying? On the same song. On the same mm -hmm. song. I do another verse. Um, name a nigga that wants some, I'll rap his ass, I'll trap his ass. Mm -hmm. um, and, so, and sent that to him? Mm-mm. Oh. Now I'm just sitting on that Okay, one. gotcha. Yeah, yep. I only sent him the first one. And so then, mm. And so when he does do the hook, he sends the hook and he does a verse, which is like, if, if Drake does that for anybody, you, you should, you should. And if you can't win off that, then you should just not, mm. you should not just like, <laughs> you know. New occupation. And if he does it for B dot, hey, that's, That might happen one day. If he does that for, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and bro. I'm talking about even now, you know what I'm 100%. saying? You know it actually I mean? still works now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's crazy, he, he, right? I'm telling you. So he sent this this hook. <laughs> I said, "Oh no, this is no bullshit." I listened to the song two times, and I never listened to it again. I said, "This is my first time knowing what a hit sound like." I put mm. that on everything. I'm like, "This shit." It had sounded like I heard this shit a hundred times. It was already done. Yeah, and I keep closing it because in my mind it was it was like my computer, and I, I just remember like. <laughs> Um, I, I, and I remember my homeboy came, and I I remember playing it for him, and I just you don't need to hear it once. <laughs> mm. I'm like you know what this you know, I, and, you know, and I put my and and, and that that one was that, and then uh, with the birthday song I did South by Southwest and Big Sean and Kanye came to support me, mm -hmm. boom boom boom, and um, at this time, same thing I got my bus outside with my studio, and I got my chef with me. I've been having a chef for. 10, 15 years, but that's something that I also saw Wayne had back mm -hmm. in 08. So I got yep. the chef, only yep. eat certain food. I've been only eating certain food. Yep. And um, and I don't really, I'm not a fast food eater. So I got my chef cooking, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Got everything smelling. So I'm like, man, you know, you guys want something to eat. like. And I remember Sean got something different, whatever it was, and Ye got something different. And we on my studio bus. And I had a song in my mind that I thought was some Ye shit. And I'm sure everybody always does this to everybody. There's some 2 chain shit. And I'm like, no, it ain't. <laughs> so I'm like, I play this shit for Ye. And he's like, oh, let, me, let me see what else you got. you know. And I was like, damn, man, I just knew he was going to love mm. this song. you know. And I play song, cool. And then I play this song, you know, uh, my birthday is a big booty hoe. And he, he was like, that's hard. <laughs> and I was like, You on this one? He, like, he, he, he said some more stuff that I ain't gonna say, right? And so, um, yeah, he was like, This the one, and I, and you know, the and shout out to Sonny Digital because he was hmm. a producer on that, and then you know, that 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 took off too. So, all this energy was just, but but so, so that be ready for the momentum, be yeah, ready but, for the moment. But I want to say this those two songs, so No Lie was my first single. Uh, birthday song was my second single, but my third single was I'm Different, right? Mm -hmm. And and with I'm Different, I remember being in London and them telling me that it, had, it was platinum. It sold them, you know, it did its thing. And that, out of all the songs, made me feel like I was the uh, uh, artist or whatever I came because mm. it was just me. 
Just yeah, you I, on the yeah, song. I, yeah, you know, I did the hook. Yeah, I did the verse. Yeah, Musta did the beat. Ain't no sample. Ain't yep. nothing. Like with no lie, I still, well, it kept. I still was humble. I like this. Yeah. It was Drake on it. You know, Drake's I mean, hot I out here. Yeah, yeah. With, 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 he blessed uh, me. Right, yeah, he blessed me with birthday song. He's like, yeah, he don't pick the person to do the video here and the song. Like, man, this, some, you know, I'm, I wasn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know. But when I'm different, woo, went platinum. Undeniable. I'm in, I'm in the mirror like, you got this, you know what I'm saying? It's you. <laughs> right. It's you, you know what I'm saying? That's right, shorty, you know what I'm saying? They all know, they, they believe you, they, you know what I'm saying? All the they thought you, you, you did this. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. just that. And so that was the Yo. energy behind that, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I feel that way for other artists too. I'm like, artists know when they ain't done shit. Like, you know, yeah. you know, Your you know. Moment. Yeah, you moment. It's truly you. I don't just know if you, you. Uh, sometimes they be like, you know, throw this money away because I know I ain't done shit. Or sometimes they be like, let me be cool because it's, you know, two ways to do it. But, you know, for me, that was my energy around the time. Right. Earlier you said, you know, you're working on your own solo stuff still. Mm -hmm. You know, um, last year though, for your project, uh, you had a song called Free BG. Mm -hmm. Now, Free yeah. BG's free. Yeah, BG's <laughs> Yeah, we have a song together already. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, BG's a real, I actually knew BG. I met BG before I met Wayne. Wow. Uh -huh. Because BG, for people who know the Hot Boys thing, they broke up or whatever, and BG came to Atlanta. Mm. And once again, I was selling, I was trapping, you know what I mean? And um, he came to Atlanta, and when he came to Atlanta, everybody was like, man, you know, BG, Atlanta was like fucking with him. I'm mean, T.I. was, had him around a lot, and yeah. so mm -hmm. trying to bring in the grand hustle. Grand at that hustle, time. yeah, yeah. Yep. So we I built a, we built a rapport in, and you know, drinking, lean, and all that mm -hmm. shit um, back then. And then I end up I end up meeting, you know, Wayne maybe a, a little wise after that, not that long mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. Have you guys oh, obviously done the record? Um, mm -hmm. What was that session like? We weren't in together. Okay. It, it Mike Will too. Mike man, that's Will? crazy. Mike Will put it together. I did some. And Mike will put it together for me, but I, me and um, BG, we Facetime and all that. I just didn't try to like record it and put it <laughs> yeah. everywhere and all that. But we had a good long conversation. Yeah, that's a, that's a friend of mine, and we did when he was locked up too, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, I tell, this one, this is not my first time communicating with him. Okay. Mm -hmm. So but back to the solo effort. Like, what, what's the outlook for that? Like, what, what what's the goal? Oh man, it's gonna it's already man, I already kinda got it put together. It's, okay. it's, I'm excited, man. <laughs> I am. I'm you got excited. the vision already. Yes, man. Mm. It's gonna be dope too. Okay. Yeah, man. I got it together the title. I'm I'm working with the, like some of the arrangement and everything, but it feels it mean it has some samples that need to be clear like everything else, but I'm but I'm happy about it. The next project I'm putting out is that static project, you know what I'm okay. saying? But it's a lot of upgrading, moving around, some stuff like that. So it's it's actually fun. It's actually really, really fun, fun to be working on this. It's like no trap drums, no whatsoever, you know. Mm. But mm. I'm, I'm able to, I'm able to navigate through that, you know. I'm, 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 I'm a really good rapper, man. Yeah. I'm a really good rapper. <laughs> How I done better as a rapper in your mind? I still think I get better. You know, I think I got these things that I'm, I'm ultimately good at like if it was sports you know what i'm saying but there's some things i can work with on my offhand you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and i think my offhand would be like more like more or less more melodies and stuff like that you know i'm not somebody's gonna come on like just yeah. try to sing the roof mm -hmm. off and then like that my melodies come just if i you know stretch a word or something like that but it's not really intentional either i have like this self melody thing so it's just about like i said earlier taking certain creative risks but also using the studio to make those arrangements and adjustments. You know what I'm saying? Use the studio to make those mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I'm not making a mistake when I put it out. When I put it out, I, I you know I'm already like got yeah. it where I needed to be. Yeah. yeah. So, I, but I do think even where I am now, like like I told B dot, I still really, really, I promise to God, I surprise myself, man. Mm. I'm gonna I'm say some <laughs> shit and I'm gonna be like, man, what the, I, like I'll talk to, I'm my only child, so I'll talk to myself. I'll be like, well, what the fuck is wrong with you? And But I'll be, <laughs> I'll be talking to me. Mm. But yeah, that's, that's still where I am right now, man. And um, I don't think I have to like, prove that I can out route the next, you know, top tier rappers. Mm -hmm. But I've done songs with most of all of them. You know, Hell John. And I done did my thing. Yeah. yeah. And and still be kind of like, you know, I'm a pickable. I would like to play. Right. I want to play. You know? <laughs> I, yeah. I do like those creative risks. Like mm -hmm. as a fan, you know, for your next project, just putting it out there. Like you talk about ideas. 
I love what you did on Rap Go to the League, the song Sam. I felt that was very underrated because Thank I never you. saw you talk about that mm. subject matter. And mm. I've never really heard anybody talk right. about that. Right. And especially crazy. what you said on the outro. I was like, okay, I didn't know about taxes like that. So mm. I felt like that record really helped me understand it just a little bit more clear. That's dope. Thank you, man. Yeah. yeah. So how, how, how do we say this? How, and I think Hope does a good job of this and maybe Ross a little bit, but how to balance the a cool way of teaching. Mm -hmm. Because that's what rap kind of, that's what Nas does. That's what rap is really kind of supposed yeah, to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like one of my homeboys' kids came over and uh it just I mean he's like not a kid, he's twenty three or twenty four, but he was listening to um Long Story Short on our album and he said, Oh mm -hmm. man, yeah, I had to look up vicariously. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's telling his dad, like, yeah, 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 I had to I had to Google vicariously today. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, Well, this is <laughs> you know, but what you're saying is that like you know, find a cool way to spread some game so to speak right yeah you know what i'm saying exactly. and um i don't i don't mind that i got a couple songs that's crazy you said i do got a couple songs kind of in those those okay. lines where it's not too preachy yeah yeah not too preachy but it's just some it's just some game in there yeah. but that's so almost you your place that. in the game though if you think mm -hmm. about it it's like what is that transition like that you like yeah you was the one trying to get in now you you're in and you're the establishment in a sense like yeah. you're the standard yeah what did you think that transition is in a sense uh being being tr you got to be transparent got to be transparent with, with, with what you're doing where you are you know what i'm saying the uh the, the whether it's whether it's doing an interview at can at the candy land or saying mm -hmm. ask or whatever you just got to be like this is what's going on and real. whether an artist like is saying they get it they get it mm -hmm. we don't open up a bunch of lounges in atlanta since esco been open you know what i'm saying <laughs> like people are people get what's going on you know what i'm saying and it's like that's kind of like my way of spreading game, whether I actually articulated in a verse or not. I'm so transparent. It's like, you know, I'm just, I'm out, I'm I'm in Atlanta, I'm out here. I'm just showing people what the possibilities would be. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like keeping anything took. I, I, I'm, you know, I, like I said, I might announce it, announce it when it's time to announce, but for the most part, I'm, you know, you know, you know how many artists came here. I mean, how you get this shit, man? I'll pull the, I'll pull to do this. I'll pull, and I, I just like this. Is what happened, mm -hmm. bro? You know, yeah. this, or this is the process. You know, yeah. so I don't I have a problem. That. I don't have a problem like sharing information. That's a big problem in our community, but I don't, I don't think I got a problem with that. I don't have a problem. But you with said that. the hustle is genetic, so it is though. My, yeah. my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom. You know, obviously my mom and my dad, they did the trap thing, but then my mom's mom them did the bootleg house where they sold liquor mm -hmm. when you weren't supposed to. So when I think about it, I, I you know, my kids not gonna have to really sell anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when I think about it, it's just something that that I that I feel like that we all should do when around now anyway, like I talk about selling drugs a, a lot of my raps because a, a lot of my life I actually to to the point where it's hard for me to believe it. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, mm. but I talk about it also with an ED, like in past tense. Mm. I don't really think it's cool right now. I didn't think it was. Matter of fact, when I did sell drugs, it wasn't cool. You like didn't tell everybody. You like played right. crazy. You mm -hmm, didn't like mm -hmm. yeah yeah. When I was around like loot or something like that, I didn't tell them niggas I had a J outside waiting on me. Mm. I was just like, hey man, I'm about to run run into the store right quick or whatever that that excuse was. And so, um. And that's another thing, um, not even just like with, with using the past and whatever happened in the past as far as trauma and stuff like that. Now figuring out a way to um, not do like, I see a lot of people because right now I'm in the process of working on a book and a film. Oh, wow. But okay. these things that I'm working on are not based on who went through the most pain, who went through the most trauma, who, who the toughest, who had the toughest background or whatever that is you know what i'm saying because when i think about trauma um a lot with men we we talk about you know we'll talk about you know whatever that we were dealing with in the household when you talk about trauma with a with a woman she could go into a something that that we can't even be on the same level with mm -hmm. so the presentations that i'm going to present with the book and with the film and about me trying to out um out gangsta nobody out tough nobody or nothing like that actually my, my book is going to really be um a different angle than what you've heard a lot of people 
that's like me put out. Mm. Let me just say that mm. without telling too much. And as far as the film space, I would say that in the same space. It's not some, I'm not in the film. I'm just inking it, seeing it through and all of that stuff. But at the same time, it's not based off, uh, you know, it's some stuff in there, but it's not based off like this is the most gangstest, grungiest stuff. Like, you right. know what I mean? I'm, I'm really, I'm really in this, into, in this creative space, you know what I'm saying? I'm really just being into something that's just putting dope stuff together, you know what I mean? Curating dope stuff. That's where I am right now in life. Yeah. Whether it's curating the cl this, this how this looks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just into curating shit right, right now, for real. Candyland. Candy mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I love this place, man. <laughs> stick, 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 stick around for tonight. <laughs> You know, Chase, I always want to know this as a rapper and a business Stupid. owner, right? Like with the rise of streaming and like the, the the fall of gatekeeping, right? How important is the strip club still when it comes to music? Like for breaking new music, rather. Mm, that's a good one, man. Y'all can't be that's focused today, baby. Y'all got some good ones, man. Because streaming is a whole nother world. Mm. Streaming is a whole nother world. And it, and, it, and it's a everything. But I think what I'm starting to see in, in all the spaces is kind of like and I hate to use, um, let me just, like, you see old, older talent or talent before me or whatever. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things they do, the fans just, gr they grow with them. So they're able to still go on to, they're able to still sell merch, they're able to still do stuff like that. In a, in a crazy sense, the strip club has a similar thing. Mm -hmm. Not so much the females, but the actual people that attend strip clubs who attended them five or ten years ago they still might pop out to go to a strip club because the energy in the strip club has always been i just want to go somewhere and chill where ain't a lot of people mm -hmm. i just want to hear some music have a drink and if a naked girl walk by <laughs> that'll be really cool mm. <laughs> i'm serious yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, ain't nobody low like key. Ain't yeah, low key ain't nobody like i'm gonna want to go spend i want to go throw away five thousand that's yeah. not the mentality of most people that come in the strip club yes. bro they like I'm gonna go in here eat, watch the game, blah blah blah. Just I'm not. I'm, I'm. They actually like I'm too old to go to the other the club where you know. So yeah. at, when you say that, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about us. A lot of people that I see coming here, and it's like we all growing up the, the, together. You know what I'm saying? It's like the, the, even the strip, I guess the strip club fan base or whatever. They grow up and still, mm -hmm. you know, kind of wanna, you know, they still come out. It's not so much where like a lot of the young cats come out. 22, 23, and throw 2,000, like, yeah. happened in the past. I don't see that a lot. Yeah, because, like, you know, artists like a Jeezy, you know, his songs got broken in the strip club, and, you know, yeah. other artists as well. And it's like, I don't know if it's still the same, like, mm -hmm. like the attitudes or mm -hmm. have you, changed. You, you will hear songs, but I think it's, I think it's, I don't, I don't think it's here first. It used to be here first. Right. Like, it used yeah. to be here first. Yeah. And then it was here first because the people, it was some, Besides the people that were just coming to chill, it was some movers and shakers and, mm. and that would come to strip clubs. You know, using what I'm for that. Yeah, yeah, because it's 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 not pe many people getting killed in the strip club, beat up, none of that shit. It's like this is really a place you can come. You just smell like smoke when you leave. Your clothes <laughs> still look the same. You know, it's really like that. You really, it's really like that, man. When you just think about the probability of going to a strip club, leave, going and leaving, getting home safely, there's a very high chance that they're going to a club. Boom, 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 boom. Man, what's up, man? What can't, what, what you doing? Man, whatever. Catch you out, all that old energy. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. very rare in here because really only the girls supposed to be dancing. Mm. So ain't nobody got no business really bumping until you stepping on your shoes and stuff. That's my philosophy on things. Right. Yeah. You know, so I think that's why, um, um, but I, but as far as music, I, I don't hear the first song. I'm now I ain't gonna lie at uh, at Esco, and that might be based on the DJs. I've heard songs in there that I have never heard and been like, who is in it? I mean, mm -hmm. a month later, that should be out of here. But I think that's based off the the particular DJ. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm that saying? When I think about it, it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the because I've heard man when um uh when uh man club club God beat Kings first. Like he, he been doing his thing, yeah. but when he had to like when the run come with the eat me out and all them mm -hmm. little the songs like that, yeah. man, I would be in Esco and everybody around me that would be just you know I'm like man who who is this and it was a couple it was another artist a couple of artists but I remember that stand I remember asking like who is this and I remember it was a couple other artists but in the strip club I think it's uh, maybe secondary now mm. yeah. mm -hmm. let me be honest. Wow. 
first things first is this Collie Grove 2, man. Woo! Make sure everyone go stream that, buy it. I'm saying. Please do. Are you guys yep. going on a tour for this? Yeah, we're going on a tour. Okay. Yeah, okay. We're going on a tour. That's going to be fun, too. But Top the, of next year? Yeah. We're trying to, um, you know, get it all together, rock, rock all that stuff. But a tour is, is necessary for this project. I got some ideas for that, too. But a tour is necessary for the project. Mm -hmm. Um, And then he... You know, he got the Carter Six coming. Ooh, I, got, yeah. I got my, yeah. yeah man. You know he can rap, right? Yeah, so I heard. Yeah, yeah he can rap. You both are pretty good. You both are <laughs> yeah, pretty good, yeah. these guys. I like, I, like to, I like to pat myself on the back, too, though. <laughs> they ain't get Does washed. Does it competitive with the verses? Where you like- Every time. you said verse to each other? Does it like, ever? <laughs> man. I don't want nobody to look at our phone, man. Our phone full of like, you our phone is full of shit. You off the record, our it's crazy. Our phone is full of shit. <laughs> but it's like, Man, home, he's he's man. It's just like it's dope, man. It's dope, man. You know, what I mean? and I'm sure now we're in a rap group with Lil Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Emma, I ain't thinking about the rap group with yeah, Lil Wayne. Yeah, that's 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 cool. I ain't never seen boy, that. titty boy, titty in a rap boy, group man. with Lil Wayne. And Lil that's, Wayne's in a rap group with titty boy. Mm -hmm. Hello, and I ain't getting washed now. I ain't getting oh, washed no, now. I'm, sta <laughs> I'm standing. On, I'm standing on business. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love I'm it. Getting on, I'm standing on business, man. You <laughs> getting washed, man? Nah. Well, what do you think that the, when you look back? I mean, you're gonna do more albums after. Like, what, mm -hmm. what do you think that these Kali Grove projects are winning? What, is, what does that mean to your career and your legacy? You think when you look at it. You got the one cover with my face, his tattoo. You got the other cover with his face, my beard. Um, we we just we brothers like that, man. And yeah. it was good that we had an era where we can go back and sit like we we put some because man, the music the, the music, although like all the music we do, it we, we it has a time capsule and you can like go back and kind of remember what was going on. It's just something you know really special about just working with somebody that really don't have to do nothing no more, mm -hmm. but still does it every day, very passionately at yeah. a very high level. You know what I'm saying? And so being able to come into that world and like I say, still sharp and still, and uh, and you know like, and you if you don't know like he's someone that's like playing a guitar right here and rapping and, and then recording that, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> doing all type of stuff, you know? And so it's just about not believing in having a, like a glass ceiling. I think that's what mm -hmm. this project just proved. Like it's no such thing as a, as a glass ceiling. You know what I'm saying? We just, you know, we, we standing on, on whatever we have to stand on, but it's yeah, just a blessing, man. Uh, and when you say being in a group with Lil Wayne, really think about it like that. But I guess currently, Ran ghost, ran yeah. ghost, ran man. ghost, ran ghost, 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 yeah. and Ray. Yeah, somebody actually hit tech was like, "Y'all need to, we need to go out with them and do some stuff. That'll be cool Ooh. too." What made I you like, do that with the whole shame on it? Like, do we ask about? I'm a Wu Tang fan, you know. Yeah, yeah. Fan. to go I'm all in, but to go all in with. I that. went all in. I changed my tone. I was in there like, <laughs> shame on a yeah. <laughs> old, <laughs> yeah, I was on all that. Um, and actually, Dollar put me on them. I wasn't on Wu Tang. I was somebody that would only listen to like Atlanta music for a long time. And I then you telling me this. Yeah. I remember this. Yeah, yeah. I, I never forget. I knocked on Dollar <laughs> door, and his mom was like, "His door was made when you open the door. It was steps go straight to his room." His mom was like, "He up there." <laughs> Listen to something, man. I never forget, bro. You got to thank somebody from Atlanta. I want you. I want to put you where I was at. I'm young. I'm from Atlanta, <laughs> and the, he's listening to Jizza. Mm. Liquid, Liquid swords. swords, and it's yeah. it's all yeah. that I don't when know. The FCs came, yeah, yeah. Droom, yeah. Droom, droom, yeah. So, so you gotta yeah. think. When I look at them <laughs> steps, I'm not knowing. I'm like, what it's a video is this? game? Yeah. But he explained to me that they trap too. That's really what he was trying to Hello. tell me. He like, bro, you gotta Hello. listen. He's like, bro, them folks, you know, they don't know talking about doing snoring and everything. So yeah. Dollar trying to, bro. The folks trapped too, bro. They trapped just like we trapped. They <laughs> trying to tell me that I, I, I can't even get, I can't even. The Sonics. Yeah, yeah I can't even get, yeah. you know, through it. But he he kind of, he the one put me in there like, bro, you got to listen. Home said he doing this. They out, they doing we, you know, and I was like, oh, you know, that's how I got put on it. And then mm. start being like, ooh, mm. damn. Damn, you know what I mean? When I started being able to like read their language, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, but connect. Yeah. yeah, it did. I, they was like some some street dudes, so to speak. So, 100%. but yeah, that, that's what it was to redo that to pay homage to them. Yeah, it's big time. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Collie Grove 2. 
Chance, thank you, brother. We thank appreciate you, you brother. Appreciate you, appreciate man. Appreciate you, man. Thank Make you. sure y'all yeah, stream that, rare. man. One of the best this year. Yes, yes, yes. Thank y'all, man. Two so, Chase. Rap Radar Podcast. Yeah. True.